Well, good day, and thank you for joining us as we continue our series here on the Cube of the AWS Startup Showcase, featuring today Big ID. And with us is Will Murphy, who's the Vice President of Business Development and Alliances at Big ID. And Will, good day to you. How are you doing today? Thanks, John. I'm doing well. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, that's great. And, and a Cube alum, too, I might add. So it's nice to have you back. Um, let's first off, let's share the Big ID story. Uh, you've been around for just a handful of years, accolades coming from every which direction. So obviously, uh, what you're doing, you're doing very well. But for our viewers who might not be too familiar with Big ID, just give us a, a 30,000 foot level of your core competence. Yeah, absolutely. So actually, we just had our five year anniversary for Big ID, uh, which we're, we're quite excited about. Um, and that five year comes with some pretty big red marks. We've raised over $200 million for a, a unicorn now. Um, but where that comes to and, and how that came about was that um, we're dealing with um, longstanding problems with modern data landscapes, security, governance, privacy initiatives. Um, and starting in 2016 with the uh, authorship of GDPR, the European Privacy Law, organizations had to treat data differently than they did before. They couldn't afford to just sit on all this data that was collected for a couple of reasons, right? Uh, one of them being that it's expensive. So you're, you're constantly storing data, whether that's on-prem or in the cloud, as we're going to talk about, there's expense to that. You have to pay to secure the data and keep it from being leaked. You have to pay for access control. You have to pay for a lot of different things. And you're not getting any value out of that. And then there's the idea of the, the customer trust piece, which is like if anything happens to that data, um, your reputational, uh, your reputation as a company and the trust you have between your customers and, and, and your organization is, is broken. So big ID, what we did is we decided that there was a, a foundation that needed to be built. And the foundation was data discovery. If, you, if an organization knows where its data is, whose data it is, where it is, um, and what it is, and also who has access to it, they can start to make actionable decisions based on uh, the data and based on this new data intelligence. So we're trying to help organizations keep up with modern data initiatives. And we're empowering organizations to handle their data, sensitive, personal, regulated. And what's actually quite interesting is we allow organizations to define what's sensitive to them because like people, organizations are all different. And so what's sensitive to one organization might not be to another. It goes beyond the wall. And so we're giving organizations that new power and flexibility. Yeah, and, and this is what, what I, I still find striking is that uh, obviously with this exponential growth of data, you got you know, machine learning just bringing billions of inputs, it seems like, right? And all of a sudden you have this vast reservoir of data is that companies in large part um, don't know a lot about the, the data that they're harvesting and where it is. And so it's not actionable. It's kind of dark data, right? Just out there reciting um, and so, as I understand it, this this is your focus basically is to tell people, hey, here's your landscape. Uh, here's how you can better put it to action, why it's valuable, and we're going to help you protect it. Um, and they're not aware of these things, which I still find a little striking in this day and age. And it goes even further. So, you know, when you start to when you start to reveal the truth and what's going on with data, there's a couple of things that some organizations do uh, and, and are, I think human instincts. Some organizations want to bury their head in the sand, like everything's fine, uh, which is, as we know, and we've seen the news frequently, not a sustainable approach. Uh, there's the, there's the, like, let's be, we're overwhelmed. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't even know, we don't even know where to start. Then there's the a natural reaction, which is, okay, we have to centralize and control everything, which defeats the purpose of having um, shared drives and collaboration and um, geographically disparate workforces, which we've seen that particularly over the last year, how important that resiliency within organizations is to be able to work in different areas. And so um, it really restricts the value that um, organizations can get from their data, which is important. And it's important in, in a ton of ways. Um, and for customers that have allowed their, their data to be, to be stored and harvested by these organizations, like, they're not getting value out of it either. It's just risk. And we've got to move data from the liability side of the balance sheet um, to the asset side of the balance sheet. And that comes first and foremost with knowledge. So everybody's going cloud, right? Uh, used to be everybody's on-prem and all of a sudden we build a bigger house. And, and yeah. so because you build a bigger house, you need better security, right? Your parameters got to, got to grow. And that's where I assume AWS has come in with you. And, and, and this is a two-year partnership that you've been engaged with in AWS. So maybe shine a little light on that about the, the, the partnership that you've created with AWS and then how you then in turn transition that to leverage that for the betterment of your customer base. 
Yeah. So AWS has been a great partner. Um, they are very forward looking and for an organization as large as they are, very forward looking that uh, they can't do everything that their their customers need. And it's better for the for the ecosystem as a whole to enable small companies like us. And we were very small when we started our relationship with them uh, to, to join their partner uh, organization. So we're an advanced partner now. We're part of ISV Accelerate. So it's a slightly more elite partner organization. Um, and we're there because our customers are there. And, and AWS, like us, uh, we both have a customer-obsessed culture. Uh, but organizations are embracing the cloud. And there's fear of the cloud, but there's there really shouldn't be in the, in the way that we we thought of it maybe five or 10 years ago in that um, companies like AWS are spending a lot more money on security than most organizations can. So like they have huge security teams, they're building massive infrastructure. And then on top of that, companies themselves can do can use uh, products like Big ID and other products to make themselves more secure uh, from outside threats and from, from inside threats as well. So um, we are trying to, with them, approach modern data challenge as well. So even within AWS, if you put all the information in, like, let's say S3 buckets, that doesn't really tell you anything. It's like, you know, I, I make this analogy sometimes. I live in, in Manhattan. If I were to collect all the keys uh, of everybody that lived in a 10 block radius around me and put it into a dumpster uh, and keep doing that, I would theoretically know where all the keys were. They are in the dumpster. Now, if somebody asked me, I'd like my keys back. Uh, I'd have a really hard time giving them that because I've got to sort through, you know, 10,000 people's keys and I don't really know a lot about it. But those keys say a lot. You know, it says, are, are you in an old building? Are you in a new building? Do you have a bike? Do you have a car? Do you have a gym locker? There's all sorts of information. And I think that this analogy holds up for data a bit of, of the way you store your data is important. But um, you can gain a lot of uh, theoretically innocuous but valuable information from the data that's there while not compromising the sensitive data. And, as, and AWS has been a fabulous partner in this. They've helped us build a AWS security hub integration out of the box. Um, we now work with over 12 different AWS native uh, applications from anything like S3, Redshift, Athena, uh, Kinesis, as well as um, apps built on AWS like Snowflake and Databricks that we that we connect to. And in AWS, the technical team, the partner teams have been an enormous part of, of our success there. We're very proud to have joined the marketplace to be where our customers want to buy enterprise software more and more. Um, and that's another area that we're collaborating uh, in, in joint accounts now to bring more value and simplicity to our joint customers. So what's your, your process in terms of your customer in, in, in uh, evaluating their needs? Because you just talked about it earlier about you know, different approaches to security. Some people put their head in the sand, right? Some people admit you know, there's a problem. Some people fully are engaged. So I assume there's also different levels of sophistication in terms of what they already have in place, and then what their needs are. So, uh, if you would shine a little light on that about assessing, you know, where they are in terms of their data landscape and how AWS and its tools, which you just touched on, you know, the multiple tools you have in the, your service, how all that comes together to develop what would be, I, I guess, a unique program for a company's specific needs. It is. We started talking to the the largest enterprise accounts when we were founded. And we still have a, a, a real proclivity and expertise in that area. So the issues with the, the large enterprise accounts and the uniqueness there is scale. They have a tremendous amount of data, HR data, financial data, customer data, you name it, right? Like we'll go, we could, we could go dry mouth talking about how many, the same data so many times with, with these large customers. Um, for AWS, scale wasn't an issue. They can store it, they can analyze it, they can do tons with it. Where we were helping is that we could make that safer. So if you want to perform data analytics, you want to ensure that sensitive data is not being part of that. You want to make sure you're not violating local, nat national, or industry-specific regulations. Financial services is a great example. There's dozens of regulations at the federal level in the United States, and each state has their own regulations. This becomes increasingly complex. So AWS handles this by, by allowing an amazing amount of customization for their customers. They have data centers in the right places, they have experts on, on uh, vertical specific issues. Big ID handles this similarly in some ways, but we handle it through ostensibility. So one of our big things is we have to be able to connect to every, everywhere where our customers have data. So we want to build a foundation of like, let's say first, let's understand the goals. Is the goal compliance with the law, which it should be for everybody. That should just be like, we need to, we need to comply with the law. Like that's, <laughs> that's easy. Yeah. Then is the next piece, like, are we dealing with something legacy? Was there a breach? Do we need to understand what happened? 
are we trying to be forward looking and understanding we, we want to make sure we can lock down our most sensitive data, tier our storage, tier our security, uh, tier our, our analytics efforts, which also is cost effective. So you don't have to do uh, everything everywhere. Um, or is the goal a little bit like we need to get a return on investment faster and we can't do that without de-risking some of that. So we've taken those lessons from the enterprise where it's exceedingly difficult uh, to work because of the strict requirements, because the customers expect more. And I think like AWS, we're bringing it down market. Uh, we have some a new product coming out. Uh, it's exclusive for uh, AWS now called Small ID, which is a cloud native, uh, smaller version, lighter weight version of our product for customers in the more commercial space, in the uh, SMB space, where they can start to build a foundation of understanding their data for uh, protection, for security, for, 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 for privacy. Well, and, and before I let you go here, what I like to hear about is is a practical application. You know, somebody that that you've you know that you were able to help and assist, you evaluate because you've talked about the format here. You talked about your process and you talked about some future, I guess, challenges, opportunities. But but just to give our viewers an, an idea of maybe the kind of success you've already had to uh, give them a perspective on that, to share a couple of stories if you wouldn't mind with some work that you guys did, rolled up your sleeves and, and uh, created that additional value for your customers. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll give a couple examples. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep everyone anonymized. Uh, sure. as, a, as a privacy-based company in many ways, but we, we try to respect the customers. Probably a good idea, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but like, let's talk about different types of sensitive data. So we have customers that um, intellectual property is their biggest concern. So they, they do care about compliance. They wanna comply with, all the local and national laws where they, where they their company resides and all their offices are, but they were very concerned about sensitive data sprawl around intellectual property. They have a lot of patents, they have a lot of uh, sensitive data that way. So one of the things we did is we were able to provide custom tags and classifications for their sensitive data based on intellectual property. And they could see across their uh, cloud environment, across their on-premise environment, across shared drives, et cetera, where sensitive data had sprawled, where it had moved, who was having access to it, and they were able to start um, realigning their store strategy and their uh, content management strategy, data governance strategy based on that and start to uh, move sensitive data back to certain locations, lock that down on, on a higher level, could create more access control there, um, but also proliferate and uh, share data that more teams needed access to. Um, and so that's an example of a use case that I don't think we imagined necessarily in 2016 when we were focused on privacy, but we've seen that the value can come from it. Um, so yeah. Please, yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, the other piece is, so we've worked with some of the largest AWS customers in the world. Their concern is how do we even start to scan the ter terabytes and petabytes of data in any reasonable fashion uh, without it being out of date? If we create this data map, if we create this data inventory, uh, it's going to be out of date day one. As soon as we say it's complete, we've already added more. Right. That's where our scalability fits in. We were able to do a full scan of, of their entire AWS environment in, in uh, months and then keep up with the new data that was going into their AWS environment. This is a, this is huge. This was groundbreaking for them. So our hyperscan capability uh, that we brought out, that we rolled out to AWS first, um, was a game changer for them to understand what data they had, where it is, whose it is, et cetera at a way that they never thought they could keep up with. You know, I, I'm, I brought back to the beginning of COVID when the British government was keeping track of all the COVID cases on spreadsheets and spreadsheet broke. Um, it was also out of date. As soon as they entered something else, it was already out of date. They couldn't keep up with them. Like there's better ways to do that. Uh, we, <laughs> but luckily they think they've moved on from, from that uh, manual system, but automation using the correct human inputs when necessary, then let let machine learning, let uh, big data take care of things that it can. Uh, don't waste human hours that are precious and expensive uh, unnecessarily and make better decisions based on that data. Yeah, you, know, you raised a great point too, which I had thought of about, about the fact is, you, know, you do your snapshot today and you start evaluating all their needs for today. And by the time you're able to get that done, their needs have now exponentially grown. It's like painting the Golden Gate Bridge, right? You get done, you're, and now you got to paint it again, except it got bigger. You know, we, we added lanes. But anyway, hey, Will, thanks for the time. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks for joining us here on the uh, Startup Showcase. And just remind me that if you ever ask for my keys, keep them out of that dumpster. Okay? <laughs> That'd be a good thing. Thanks, right? Jim. Great to be here. All right, pleasure.